Oh, uh, yes. Um, we can we can start with me. One second. Let me pull up. Well, do we have do we have a link to the the document loader in the agenda? If not, I will pull it I'll, up. I'll get it. I'll get it. Um, okay. I'll, I'll so I'll, I'll just I'll start with an intro. And there's really only one repository to to reference here that's in diff, and it's the diff JSON LD document loader. So um sure. So I'll, I'll get started. So um I think before I tell you what a document loader is, let's just talk about what DIDs and VCs are supposed to be doing, right? So decentralized identifiers, it's a standard. It's about expression of verification methods. And there's this linkage between these like identifier strings that everyone has their own format of. And then the key material and services associate and maybe PII and all kinds of other terrible stuff, right? That are associated with that identifier, and when we say um, resolve, does everyone on the call know what a did what did resolution is? Just just out of curiosity, raise your hand if you don't know what did document resolution is. Well, I'll just say for the they can't raise their hand, so why don't you just tell us briefly anyway? Oh. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Um, did document resolution is the process of converting that identifier to a representation. Um, and in the world of JSON, it's really the way of getting from a did document identifier string to a JSON document, right? So um, when does resolution happen? It happens when you do credential verification. So like the whole purpose of verifiable credentials and DIDs as a superior product to OpenID Connect, which they are categorically, is that we don't need to rely on this OpenID Connect Foundation specification and all of their specs around how to connect these older like assertion formats to identities that are completely owned by companies that run OAuth servers, right? We don't need that anymore. We can just take this identifier and resolve it and get key material that we can use to verify an assertion. And that assertion is a, you know, a verifiable credential or a verifiable presentation. And so at the heart of verifiable credentials is this link to this thing that's described in the did core specification as did resolution. And the mechanics of how that is implemented are they vary depending on the did representation, basically. So um, in the linked data community world, there's a natural ability to move from an identifier for a thing to a node represented as an information graph that describes that thing. And so when we talk about JSON LD, did document representations, the identifier, the did, it identifies this one particular, you know, representation that we often call like a did document, but there are actually multiple different linked data expressions of the same identifier that you might see out there in the wild. Um, and the process uh, that all JSON LD processing software uses to go from the identifier to the JSON object is called a document loader. And so, for most people who've been working in the space for a very long time, when they hear the word did resolution, they think, oh, document loader, because that's kind of what that thing is doing at the end of the day, right? Document loaders have been around for a long time. You see them in JSON linked data as a way of turning URLs into um, JSON objects. And that's part of creating verifiable credentials. It's part of well, it's, it's actually part, part of verifying you know, credentials. Um, and, and the key sort of point behind document loaders is they're just the thing that did resolution is doing formalized in a very convenient way that's integrated into the JSON LD specification. So you don't need to define it every time you need to do that kind of thing. You can just say, I'm doing JSON LD uh, you know, I'm going to dereference this identifier. And that implies that you're going to use a document loader to do it. And it comes with a set of standards. And 
when we use verifiable credentials in JSON LD, we're, we're actually just using the fact that JSON LD spec describes this fundamental property of mapping that identifier to the object. And we, we then use the object um, to further verify the credentials and that kind of thing. So one example of, of like why this is really powerful and valuable comes in the form of the verifiable credentials specification, the JWT variant. Um, before I just you know ramble on about document loaders and why they're so important, I see Adrian has his hand up. Just a quick question to somebody like me who doesn't have any idea as to the difference between JSON and JSON LD and CBOR in, in what we're doing. I have no horse in that race. Uh, the, the fact that you keep referring to uh, JSON LD, does it matter? Uh, yep. In other words, uh, you know, does the representation in terms of privacy issues or adoptability, you know, or adoption issues, does it matter at all? Uh, so in other words, I'm, yeah. I'm looking for the punchline to why you're telling us this. Yes, yeah, so the punchline is the representation has a spec and that spec implies a set of affordances and capabilities. So when, you, when I say the word JSON, that means there's, there's actually two specs that define JSON. There are RFCs, I don't remember the numbers for them, but they are what define what JSON is. Now, JSON LD has a spec and it's built on top of those JSON specs, but it comes with some extra features. And so the point that I was just about to get to is if you define your new standard in terms of existing standards that are well-defined, you have less work and everyone understands what it is that you're trying to do a lot better because instead of reinventing a bunch of terms, you've actually just said, well, they define those terms over there. They've explained how it all works. We're just doing a special case of that, right? And so that's, that's what JSON-LD document loaders are. The, the thing that did resolution in JSON-LD is a special case of, is actually the way to think about it. So before the did spec existed, document loaders were solving exactly what did resolution is doing today, fine by themselves, right? And then when the did core spec came about, really what did core is saying is there is this process called resolution, which is a special case of JSON LD document resolution for the JSON LD representation. And for other representations, this is where it gets super, super terrible. Who knows, right? So we had to add a bunch of language to did core to make sure that fragment dereferencing for JSON only was equivalent to JSON LD because there is no concept of dereferencing in JSON only because JSON isn't a linked data format. So there is so so anytime you encounter a version of a linked data problem in a non-linked data native format, which you know CBOR and XML are examples of this, JSON LD and IPLD are examples of linked data formats. You will have to define this thing that's like document loader slash resolution. You're going to have to define it again. And in fact, we we have defined it again for JSON only in the did core spec because. It, fundamentally wouldn't have been possible to do JSON only without making that definition because there's no concept of resolution in JSON, the spec by itself. So we had to add that to the did core spec. Uh, so yeah, so I guess now just to sort of, because this is the interoperability working group, I want to answer the question of, you know, why are document loaders so important to interoperability? Obviously in the JSON LD community, um, document loader, the de definition of that entity allowed for Ruby and Python and Rust and Go and JavaScript and you know Java and like all the other languages, they can all look at the JSON LD spec. They can read the part of it that describes what a, J what a document loader is. And it actually, if they just implement that, they have actually implemented 99% of what you need to do did core JSON LD document representation resolution. Like it's so all my, it's and this is the, you know it's unfortunate that people aren't a little bit more honest about the history of did core but that's part of the reason that did core looks so much like json ld is it started as being only json ld and it was built on most of did resolution is built on mostly on top of document loading the functionality that was described formally in the json ld specification since then we've added other representations and we've had to define 
how resolution works in those other representations. And it's the reason that we had to pull in the did resolution spec pieces of it to support additional representations. And the interoperability across those representations is only possible because of the language in did core, because they're not JSON LD, right? If, if, if everyone says they're using JSON LD, it's like very easy. The spec defines a huge amount of what you need for interoperability. But the second that you say you need interoperability across many representations, you now have to look at the different specs and see the gaps. And then in your spec, fill those gaps with normative language that unifies them. And we've done that in did core by defining how dereferencing works for JSON only. We'd have to do the same thing for Seabor. Every MIME type has its own language that needs to apply to that. Um, and then in, in the very, so that's the, at the PKI layer in terms of specs, you have to do that. But then at the assertion format layer, you also have to explain how these identifiers are related. So in um, JSON-LD verifiable credentials, the document loader is passed to the software that does the verification. So in BBS plus signatures, um, in JSON, the JSON-LD proofing variant of them or any of the other JSON-LD proofing variants, you can pass the document loader and that thing is gonna be used to turn the did with the fragment into the key material used to check the proof. And it automatically works and you can use off the shelf to build software to build it. In the JWT variants, like the Uport library that was donated to diff, there's custom code that's written in there that handles turning that string into a did document. And it's not actually standardized anywhere other than in the did core spec, which is not obviously published you know, fully yet, right? So that that's that process needed to be written uh, like as fundamentally new code. There wasn't a spec that Uport could just like in, install a library and like make it work, right? Like they had to they had to write their own version of it because they weren't using JSON LD, and so they did. Um, that process gets applied to every version of a credential format that isn't sort of linked data native that doesn't have this concept of a document loader or something similar to it built in. So we saw the same thing with the linked data um, versus JWT representation of the well-known did configuration. So another spec at diff. That spec, we had to define basically how are the verifiable credential data JWT format and the linked data format um, proof format, how are they the same and in particular because the VC spec never covered how to do dereferencing for JWT credentials, we have to say in our spec, we're using a JWT credential. And by the way, here's how you do dereferencing. Did core, when it's finished, hopefully we'll make it so that we can all just point to did core and say, that's how you do it. Um, and it will solve that problem for a large number of these different credential assertion formats. But just to be clear on the subject of you know standards and interoperability, linked data interoperability works fine right now without did core. Um, and it's mostly because of the nature of how document loaders work. Um, they're a very, very simple function. It takes a string as an input and it produces an object as an output, usually a promise for an object. And that object is, is anything. In the case of did resolution, it's a did string as an input and a did document as an output. But you can actually do that same thing for anything that's in schema.org, random link data platform, JSON objects that might be relevant, IoT in the IoT space, particularly the Azure IoT platform and other platforms that represent uh, non-person entities using JSON-LD. They're also taking identifiers and converting them to objects using a document loader. So um, I, the document loaders are a pretty technical uh, concept. I'm wondering if this is like kind of unhelpful and you'd rather a more specific example or if there's questions or if we should move on to the next uh, speaker. Uh, <laughs> this was really helpful, Ori. Um, do folks have questions for Ori before we move on to the next speaker. I, I would, I was actually wondering, it, so this is a really good high level explanation of what 
the document loader is, but uh, do you, did you want to just say a few words about specifically yeah. what this donation was or what Thank kinds you. of issues or pull requests you'd like to see in it? <laughs> yeah, if it, can you just scroll down a little bit so that the code is on the screen? Great. So um, what this thing right here is really showing you is that I'm, I use the builder pattern to make it easy for you to construct custom document loaders. That's a lot of mouthful of words to say that when you're managing the security context of your application, there is a certain set of things that you will handle and a certain set of things that you will not handle. Document loaders are the J JSON LD's firewall. So you can use the document loader to basically say, looks like the software is requesting something. I'm not going to go to the internet for it. I'm going to go to my cache that I have that's not going to reveal anything about the activity that I'm doing. I'm going to pull that from my local file system. Or in the case of it's uh, an identifier that's self-certifying and deterministic, you can actually just basically put the result, resolution result right in there and not go to the network to resolve it. So that an, an example of that is did key resolution. Um, you can get a did document using a document loader from a did key, and it's not calling the universal resolver. It's just turning the key into the did document per the spec. So what this software that we've donated to Diff does is it just makes it really easy to build document loaders solving the, the two primary problems that we use them to solve. The first problem is how do I work with JSON LD? Like that's a, what you use a document loader for. And one of the problems in that space is that you often aren't sure how to like, you're, you find yourself constructing custom document loaders to support the security context that you're working in. So you might be working in an experimental security context for zero knowledge proofs. That's not a W3C standard. And so you always need to like manually wire that in order to get everything to work. And this just makes it super easy because we just publish like basically the code you need to easily do that with autocomplete and visual studio code. And then um, like, for example, the did course specification, you might need that JSON LD context because you're doing verifiable credentials that are linked to decentralized identifiers. So we make it really easy to add that um, context and, and, and then get a document loader that supports W3C verifiable credentials, did core, the W3ID security vocab, which is the vocabulary underpinning all linked data proofs and most of the security context definitions for the decentralized identifier spec. And then at the end of it, we're showing basically you can add your method resolvers into this system by basically adding a resolver and then producing, you know, plugging in your code that's gonna handle resolution. So I, IPFS hashes are actually another thing that you can build a resolver around. It's a string, you're gonna get a document out of it, right? So this piece of software's primary purpose is just to make working with linked data easy. And I'd argue that Everyone who works in the space, even if they are a linked data hater and they don't believe in JSON all day or they hate it or they think it's going to die or it's terrible technology, they're just going to be writing their own version of something like this in their software to be able to put a competitive product out on the market. Like I guarantee you, everyone who works with DIDs has a piece of software that does something like this. And the, I think the cool thing about JSON LD as a representation is that piece of software actually has form has already been formally defined by a standard that's a full W3C standard. So we don't even have to wait for did core. You can do verifiable credentials with the document loader today. Um, and even if you're doing JWT or some assertion format that's completely non-linked data and not semantically unambiguous, you're going to be writing some code that's going to be looking a lot like a document loader. One one quick clarifying question: What uh, what what do you mean by semantically unambiguous? Is, is that something about the way contexts are graphed, or or how that yeah. graph is? Constructed? Yeah. So, so this is JSON LD's purpose was to be isomorphic to RDF, which is an abstract data model for representing information resources on the internet. RDF is the system that everyone has used to manage industry ontologies for the last you know multiple decades. So if you want an unambiguous way of representing a chemical molecule, there's an RDF ontology for that. If you want an unambiguous way of representing uh, geographic information, there's an ontology for that. 
if you want an unambiguous way of representing information in a way that search engines can process automatically and understand, there's an ontology for that. And it's, it's called schema.org and Bing and Google and Microsoft, you know, all these folks contribute to schema.org on, on a regular basis. So when you see a JSON-LD representation, it looks like JSON, but it's really not. It's really linked data. And the thing that, that is hidden in that, you know, it what like sort of see, looks innocently like just normal vanilla, not terribly secure or verbose or type safe JSON is each of the terms can be expanded to be URIs that are uh, defining the actual semantics of the term. And so when I say semantically unambiguous verifiable credentials, it's because there's such thing as semantically ambiguous verifiable credentials. And that's what a JWT is because the only reason that you know that the profile field or the name field is the same thing is because you have a registry somewhere which provides the context for what that field is. So if you look at the OpenID Foundation specification for um, assurance providers, you know this is a new specification they're developing uh, associated with basically providing assurance around verified claims, which sounds a lot like verifiable credentials. They have, a spe they have a, an example in their specification called utility bill, where you know, you can agree that a utility bill is represented in a specific way by relying on their registry of, of claim material that's registered. And what that is, is it's just JSON-LD with extra steps and no standard because you're building a registry which defines the semantics of the properties. And then you're saying that any entity that uses this registry semantic properties can be defined but it's not formalized anywhere in, 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 a, in, a, in a standard anyway. It's, uh, you, you find yourself doing that every time you need a new spec. And it's just basically a huge waste of time because there are such things as ontologies out there and you can have interoperability with them. And JSON-LD was built to solve that problem.